All right, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Higgins, and I'm giving the presentation on applications of whole slide imaging into neuroscience. What we've seen over the past uh, bunch of years is that whole slide imaging, which is usually uh, used for digital pathology for clinical use, uh, is now uh, being used in neuroscience for the ability to look at high resolution images in a field of view, but to be able to zoom out and to see what parts of brain that the, uh, the neurons are connected to, to be able to uh, see in different areas of the brain where, where the signal or the neurons are connected to, and it, the, what, that's what digital pathology allows you to do. So today, researchers have, we've seen a, a shift, like I mentioned, of imaging just cells, uh, individual patch clamping in tissue, to then acquiring a, a 3D montage of uh, a set of magnifications. But the problem though is, is that the, the current method in most labs right now is it's very labor intensive, and it can be very subjective of when you're doing the stitching manually. And uh, the idea is to look to, uh, the researchers are looking to gain answers in a very short period of time. And uh, the researchers are now adopting digital pathology to be able to uh, capture the image and then do a whole slide analysis on the images itself. So the, the different types of scanning is available right now. There is the area scan method and the line scan method. And uh, the difference between those two is that a line scanner continuously moves over the tissue, so the slide is moving in one direction and is able to capture it kind of like a fax machine. And, uh, but the disadvantage of those systems usually is, is resolution. They're very fast, but not, uh, not really accurate in the resolution. And then the traditional area scan is, uh, is very good, but you would have to start and stop the stage. But technology's gotten very good with the stages, but you're able to have precise X, Y movements and then you have the ability to have high resolution pictures. And uh, so the area scan methods allow you to have many different magnifications that you're able to capture with individual objectives. The idea of capturing a whole entire glass slide for digital pathology allows you to revisit the slide offline on a computer and be able to zoom in and out of the system uh, out of the actual image itself with the resolution of the actual objective you captured at. And so if you would like to look at it at 40x, you capture the whole entire slide at 40x and it stitches very nicely and uh, you usually don't see any seams or overlap. But then there's a 1D or one plane is usually kind of limited, you know, when you have a very thick sample. And so the idea, the next step is to be able to capture multiple Z levels so you can focus or simulate the microscope or to combine the images to be able to compress into one perfect plane. As a neuron, it'll dip in and out of a, a, a section. The usual typical sections are about 50 microns thick. And the idea is we would like to see them all in the same focal plane so we can map it out. So multiple Z ac acquisition and then being able to post-process that into some one plane is available today with most, most systems. So today, what we look at is in mouse brains, the connectivity was one of the first projects that were out there a few years ago, where we would rapidly try to capture as many brains or sections as possible, and being able to connect a, uh, a neural network for the mouse brain itself. And then we also see that a lot of groups are also looking at where the, uh, creating an atlas for gene expression uh, throughout the adult mouse brain and even some younger mouse brains. And then later on, we'll look at the idea of 3D neural visualization. So in this example image here, this was captured at 20x. This is a, a two by three slide. And you can see uh, from the call out to the side uh, right there, you can see the high resolution uh, zoom in on the image and we can see the astrocytes. The scan area is 44.9 millimeters by 54.4 millimeters. And uh, a size like that is a 57 gigabyte image. It's quite large, but these scanners can capture these, the, these slides within you know, 10 or 20 minutes for that size. A typical 15 by 15 usually could take uh, really just several minutes to capture per region of interest. So how many pixels is, is this image? Well, it's about 20 billion pixels. We're looking at 129,000 by 157,000 pixels. So it's the ability to have macro to micro imaging in the same image itself. So you're able to deliver uh, uh, the resolution that you're doing your research at. And then uh, the ability was added on a few years later for the idea of fluorescence imaging and montaging and fluorescence. And you can do, in this um, image here, we have an overview that was done in GFP and then the <coughs> detailed scans 
the regions of interest of the, um, the multicolor brains were all done at 20x at three channels. And it could be zoomed in like this. And so this is a region of interest at 20x. But as most of the Mouse Connect Home project uh, of mapping is, 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 is finishing out or, uh, or maybe uh, three quarters of the way through, we're noticing that there's a shift to moving up to other size brains and uh, for neuroscience and human brain has been coming up a lot lately. The idea is to create an atlas for the human brain development and then uh, we've seen a lot of shift also to traumatic brain injury from radiology to micro and being able to correlate the difference between the micro and the uh, radiology. So building a 3D model in brain injury for DP and comparing it where radiology is uh, is now being the shift of adding extra modalities. This is an example of a 4x5 slide uh, with a, a human brain slice and this also was a, a very large, it's about 100 gigabyte image uncompressed but we have a pixel resolution of 0.32 microns per pixel when you zoom into the image itself. This is an uh, image of a uh, region of interest for a, uh, a brain slice that was infected with MS. And uh, you can see the individual fluorescent channels that were captured beforehand and then combined in uh, pseudo color for red and green. Uh, as we look at the whole entire slice here, actually this was captured in 3D, so it's a little soft because if you focus and zoom up and down through the sample itself, you were able to be able to see the individual fine filaments of the of the uh, of the brain sample there, and then if we zoom in into that, you can see this very nice, very nice image. And so you have that resolution. So this was actually captured with a 30x silicone media objective, especially the objective that we make uh, that they're able to see deep and also uh, match refractive refractive index of the sample itself. But as we talk about mouse mapping, brain mapping, the USC. Uh, has a, uh, been part of the Connect Home project for quite a while in NIH funding, and they uh, are uh, imaging uh, up to about 1,000 brains right now, and they've posted over 200 brains onto their website. And the, uh, this will help researchers get a better understanding of how different the brain structure is and organized with their atlas. So their atlas, uh, uh, this is a snapshot from their website where they're looking at the um, animal one, and uh, they have that as a nissel stain, and they're able to see that in Brightfield. And then their app will allow you to turn on the fluorescent channels of the areas of interest that you're looking for, and being able to uh, check out each individual serial section and where you might be within the brain. This here is another example of their uh, map viewer navigator, and uh, looking at the different sections at different levels within the brain. This website gets 20,000 unique visitors per year. Uh, so this helps the neuroscientists to uh, look at this atlas and compare it to their own research. But sometimes looking back and forth between a website and also, a, or a, um, a printed book on, on the atlas can get very tedious. And if we can create an application that can utilize, like Allen Institute, at an open source for their brain atlas, then VisiFarm has taken advantage of that and they're able to uh, take that brain atlas, Allen Institute Brain Atlas and then they're able to automatically detect uh, regions of interest and uh, I think the, a better way would be the picture here. So you have the original brain slice that you have captured and then uh, you overlay the at atlas over the brain slice and then from there it will align, the, align it to the atlas and then you're able to uh, pick out the, ex the section over the region of interest that you're looking to do your research. And this is easily done within their software. From there you can see in this uh, picture here on the simplified workflow that uh, the user has picked uh, cerebellum and then the <clears throat> they can click on each different area, brain, stem, cerebellum or cerebrum and they're able to uh, check those off and then they would be highlighted effectively on the atlas itself. But from there, after they do their research within the, those different areas and they're looking to uh, uh, start their measurements and accounting in the different areas, a lot of them will like to also do some type of visualization. And uh, so there's a lot of commercially available visualization products out there and I'm just going to give you some examples. 
So this is a typical uh, mouse brain slide with 12 sections on it, and they're captured uh, three-channel fluorescence. And in this user uh, group here, uh, usually a mouse um, section up to 140 sections on uh, about 10 slides. And what we'll do with that is we'll use a software package to align all the brain sections or the regions of interest uh, into a volume. And then after they're all aligned, and then you will push it out to um, a visualization. So then the user can now look at where the activity is localized within the brain and be able to do some analysis from that. But a lot of times when you're looking at the global view of, a, uh, of an area, the cells are too small to count visually. So then with the software, you're allowed to be able to zoom in uh, to an area and then re readjust the visualization for that area itself. And from there, when you're looking at those uh, green cell bodies, then you can push that out to an image analysis for a 3D volume analysis. Another example here is uh, another package from Bitplane, uh, the Amera software, where we capture uh, also 140 sections. And in this section here, these were, this is a brain that was infected by a rabies virus, and they're looking at the, the size of the neurons. And they had captured this in multiple, sec uh, multiple sections and extended focal imaging, and they were able to push this out to an image, uh, an image visualization like this. So with this visualization, you're able to verify where the activity is happening within, from the virus injection, and if the virus has actually moved from different parts of the brain or did it stay in the same area. And uh, also we can see the, uh, with the color coding later on in this uh, visualization, uh, the length of the neurons. So digital pathology uh, for neuroscience is actually becoming a mainstream product where you're going to go from micro to macro and the ability to capture many, many slides and being able to process through your, the, the, the research a lot faster. A lot of these systems are very automated uh, within Brightfield and fluorescence and then you're, now you would concentrate on the research itself and the data and analytics that are available today. And then you'd be able to also, because it's digitized, there will be any fluorescence won't um, photo bleach or, or uh, dissolve over time. And then it, if you tag your images effectively, you can data mine it and you can do image comparisons side by side areas. Um, you can uh, have serial sections that can be combined as easily with, uh, with some visualization very easily. Thank you.